Hey folks, this is Carlos Dohunko at HarmonicaPractice.com here in another series of videos. Um, and this one is in particular about transcribing another piece. Um, if you haven't already seen my videos um, on my HarmonicaPractice.com website, there's a series of five videos that show you how to use transcribe. And then you watch me um, struggling to learning a piece in real time. Today I'm going to show you, this is a piece I know, but I just want to share with you this particular piece by David Bergen, uh, one of my favorite players back in the 80s. He recorded this record uh, and it's the only CD that he recorded when he was playing full-time professional and um, man, he was on fire and on some of these solos here. So I want to share with this particular piece um, called Animal Lock, and it's an instrumental, um, and it's kind of, well, just give it a listen. It's kind of a funky thing, syncopated, a little bit New Orleans, and the thing about David Bergen, um, in this solo, he's really playing, he, he loves to mix up time. Uh, this is one of the th things I like about guys like David Bergen and Paul DeLay, who take their tradition, do something different with it. And David Bergen's attitude on this is kind of just kind of don't mess with me the way he plays here. You'll see what I mean when you listen to this. So I'll take you through um, various parts of the solo to show you what he's doing and uh, we'll break it down. And uh, again, sort of um, talk about the idea of how to think about transcribing well and effectively. Um, again, I firmly believe that this kind of work where you're really using your ears and not relying on any kind of tablature to help you is part of the whole process of really learning well how to listen um, and um, uber ear training uber brain work of the best kind that you could do and also um, you you just don't learn this kind of you know the idea of learning how to phrase and syncopate nuances of tone shaping a note you don't get that from a piece of paper using a transcription a piece of paper with tablature written on it becomes more of a a crutch if you ask me it, it's um it becomes just a distraction from what you should really be doing which is really listening to the music so let's give this a listen and see what you think <laughs> Just love that solo. Um, he is the thing about this tune that you've got the head of the song here played twice, kind of a melody on the one chord. He's playing unison with the guitar player, and then the solo here. Uh, let's zoom in on this and uh, and um, we're going to break this down. The solo, which is here, is twelve bars like a regular 12 bar format instead of the band going to the four chord on bar five it goes to the seven chord um, i'm going to be playing a honer crossover harp um, in the key of c playing cross harp in the key of g and what happens instead of normally a 12 bar it goes to the four chord and here it goes to the seven chord And this is what's called um, first flat position or 12th position. Um, 
and it's a really great position to play in. You can play a lot of jazz songs sound really good in that position. But that's another cool thing about those tunes. It's just a little bit different. Um, and that's easy to articulate, just the tryout of the chord. Uh, two full bend, middle bend three, and then below four, five draw. To six draw, uh, seven blow, the nine draw is the triad. And you can do very cool things in this position. Um, I'll show you maybe towards the end about improvising with, um, you know, taking the ideas that Bergen presents in this solo and sort of just interpreting what I would do over a similar kind of a groove um, and show you what you can do. Things like you can do the minor third in there to get that. Um, that's all in the first flat position. And that sounds really good. And you never hear really traditional blues players doing that kind of stuff. Um, and without any overblows, you can play a lot of really cool stuff in this position. Um, so let's get started here. Here is the melody uh, playing. He's playing unison with the guitar player. <laughs> And then he repeats the, the, the head again here. Um, so the four bars for the head. That's a lot of information already. So we'd slow it down to 80%. Let's start. So we just get that first part. And I'll sing it first. Um, Ba -da -ba -da -da. And that's all octaves. One, four, two, five, three, six. And then we're listening. And there he's playing again octaves. That would be two to five draw and then two, five blow. One, four, draw, and then back to two, five, blow. Now, if you're taking lessons with me, I would give you this piece, and I would make you figure it out on your own, the idea of singing, repeating, and, and listening to enough that you can, you know, you, you, if you have to, if you slow it down even more, you can you just stop it to see, oh, what is that? And then the next part. And this way you can kind of micromanage it and, and break down the pieces. Uh, that's the beautiful thing about the software. You have a visual aid of where you are with the markers. Using my key commands, you can snap to the markers real quick, which is uber important. I've taken the time to put in really accurate markers. And this stuff comes in super handy when you're breaking down, especially the time of how to think about working on this piece. Because once he gets into the solo, there's a lot of really fantastic twists and turns of how he breaks up the time. Um, and so having accurate markers really makes it easy to, to think and help you think about the rhythm and the syncopation. So, so that's, I, uh, let's go back to up to 80%. So we're listening to that next phrase. And you really try to sing the nuances of what you hear. All kind of on whole three he's doing, you really have to have good control over your whole three bend. You know, you want to practice stuff like, first of all, hearing the pitches with, with the keyboard, you know. And then try to practice that bend all the way down to the top. And then, yeah, 
shaping my embouchure to kind of chew the note to get it to play as evenly a tone as possible from the top to the bottom of the bend. It's a great micro exercise to do. And then it makes doing something like this riff. You can hear the nuances of his bend, but he's... He's taking the middle in that second part. Starting in middle bend number three, bending up to the first bend number three, and then coming back down to the middle bend number three to two draw. If I slow it down. And the other really great thing about micromanaging this stuff and practicing uber slow at 50% is that you really, it's a great thing to play exactly the nuances of how he's bending at this speed. Because if you can do it slowly, you can do anything, essentially. Um, and so to even play the whole solo uber slow down, your whole thinking and groove, sense of groove, you're just slowing everything down, everything including the vibrato. And when you can do different speeds of the vibrato and the nuance of these bends at this slow speed and then gradually speeding it up, you're really flexing a set of muscles to learn how to do this stuff with really great articulation. So that's another advantage of, of uh, doing this stuff super slow. Um, Okay, so again, using my method of transcribing, um, we work sequentially through each riff, uh, micromanaging each little part, and we know that we can play that. I'll go back up to, you know, 80%. And then he does this thing. And you gotta be careful. Uh, uh, Da, do, da, da, da. You're going to sing it first. Uh, da, do, da. Da, do, da. A lot of people do this, which is full bend number two, but it's da, da, which is blow two. Draw two to blow two. And then to middle bend number three. So again, I'm giving you guys all of this stuff. Much more valuable to figure it out on yourself. And if you take lessons with me, I will send you this exact marked up file that you see, including the last solo, which is really great too. Today we're just working on the first solo. Um, and break it down on your own. And I give you tips on how to do that here. I'm doing that. Um, so where were we? So this is the next phrase. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Uh, that's pretty easy. And then he repeats that. You know, try to get those little nuances. Down, down. This little... Again, practice your bends slowly from the top to the bottom. And... Full bend number two. So you can see me chewing on this note to shape the note. Um, and when you have that kind of control, then it's not a big deal that kind of thing. Um, and he repeats the, the same thing here on the second uh, head. So to glue that together, like for instance, you could treat this whole solo, and uh, we can work sequentially through each lick like we're doing. And then, as you watched in my video number five, you would start from the end of the solo and glue everything back together because, well, watch the video and you'll see why it works that best way to actually learn and commit the thing to memory because you're not allowed to write anything down. That's the rule when you do this stuff. Um, you, you were just, if you start here, play from here to here, and then come back and then reinforce what bar 11 is doing and then play bar 12, it reinforces what you just learned a second ago, and then you come back to bar 10, learn this new chunk, and then you're, you're working, and then when you get to here, you're reinforcing what you learned a moment ago, up bar 11 and 12. Um, 
And I'm going to demonstrate that right now with these first four bars. Um, so here is the last lick. Oops. Repeat it a couple of times, go back. That's easy, just repeats the same thing. And then we go backwards. See, here we are, we're learning this new, we're reacquainting ourselves with the new chunk here. You might want to just spend a quick minute just to reacquaint yourself with that little lick. Okay, there it is. And then just play what comes after it. It just falls easily into place. And then we're listening. Uh, and then, yeah, okay, I got that. can see we're just reaffirming what comes after it and it falls into place again if you start from the beginning and keep working your way further into the solo every time you get to so if you're working what you think would be the better way to do you the further you get into the piece and you're gluing it together by memory the new chunk that you're trying to absorb is always farther away from the beginning this way it's much easier go back to the <laughs> Oh yeah, there it is. Make sure I've got it. And then play the rest. And reaffirming what I already know, which comes after it, starting from the beginning. There's the pickup. You see a pickup to the downbeat. Again, these green markers all signify every four beats. Um, so listening. I got that. The other great thing about using this program, you know, no, normally I would just sort of close my eyes to really focus on what I'm doing and listening, but you can also use it as a visual cue, watching this cursor as it moves across the audio spectrum, kind of helps you to remind you sometimes uh, where you are, it, it, it can be handy. So that, there I just played the first four bars and I committed it to memory. Of course, I already know this piece, but that's how you work essentially through the whole piece. So let's start breaking this solo down.